hello guys you're welcome back to my channel hope you guys are feeling good hope you guys are bounce like a newborn baby my name is bukumi bike crown so we're going to be checking out a video together titled australian culture shock 10 weird things about life in australia hmm. interesting let's check it out guys What's going on guys? I'm Pete from Aussie English. Welcome to this episode today where I'm going to be talking about culture shock in Australia. Let's get into it. Alright, so I was recently chatting to my wife trying to come up with uh, a list of things that she had culture shock with when she came to Australia. So if you don't know, my wife is originally from Brazil. Hey, hack hell if you're watching. <laughs> and so she came to Australia and obviously Brazil is a different country, different culture. Mm -hmm. When she got to Australia, there were a bunch of different things that she found strange. Cultural aspects of Australian life that she found different, weird, strange. So I made a list and now let's go through 10 of those things, okay? Right. And let me know in the comments below if dead. you found them weird as well. All right, number one. Cars are incredibly cheap secondhand in Australia. Mm. So cars in Australia are actually really expensive when they're new, at least as far as I know, comparatively speaking, especially if you get into luxury cars like uh, European luxury cars like Mercedes, BMW and Audi. In Australia, we used to have the Ford and Holden uh, manufacturers here building the cars in Australia. They no longer do that. When they did that though, the government put tax on any cars that were luxury cars, more than $60,000. And so you'll find that a lot of these cars from overseas that are luxury cars, especially those from Europe, will be very expensive compared to other places in the world. She also found that secondhand cars were incredibly cheap. In Brazil, cars, whether new or secondhand, are apparently much more expensive, relatively speaking, than they are here. For instance, when I bought my secondhand uh, Ford Falcon that I got recently, I recently gave it away though, but when I bought that secondhand, it was about 12 years old and it cost me $3,000. When I bought my first Holden wagon, again, it was about 18 years old and it cost me two and a half thousand dollars. So it wasn't very much at all. So there you go. In Australia, cars, if they're secondhand, can be incredibly cheap. cheap. Wow. Number two, cuts of meat. This is one that totally caught me by surprise. I had never thought about this, but the cuts of meat in Australia are very different from how they are in Brazil. One example was when I was looking up how to do Brazilian barbecues in Australia, I wanted to buy some meat and I wanted to try and do them authentically Brazil style, churrasco. I tried to get the cut of meat for picanha. Picanha is a style of Brazilian barbecue where they buy the rump part of the uh, beef, like from the bull, right? Mm. And they put salt on it, there's fat on the, on the beef and they do it on a barbecue. I tried to go and get this and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find the picanha cut of meat at any different butchers that I went to. So I had to specifically ask them to get the entire part of the cow that they normally chop up into different cuts and remove that part for me to then use. Because actually for them, they would chop it up and use it as porterhouse steaks, which were cut through that slice of meat usually like this as opposed to taking out the whole section, the, the rump section, and using that instead. So I had no idea that the cuts of meat in Australia are very different from those in Brazil. And if you wanna get the certain cuts of meat that you wanna use from other cultures, other countries, you might have to go and specifically ask a butcher to cut them for you. Number three, toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper, so I was aware that toilet paper isn't a universal thing when I went to Southeast Asia for the first time. I went to Indonesia where some of the motels and hotels would have toilet paper because I guess they were used to foreigners from the West coming to Indonesia. But a lot of the time they had a hole in the ground and a bucket of water that you would use to wash yourself. Makes sense, but in Australia we use toilet paper. One thing that was shocking to Kel was the fact that in Australia you can flush toilet paper down the toilet because in Brazil, 
the sewer system isn't set up to be able to handle flushing of toilet paper so instead of flushing it you have to put it in a the bin thing. next to the mm. toilet and empty that every day so there you go toilet paper was one of those strange things in Australia that mm. you can flush down the toilet it's number four Australia. coffee culture in Australia any of you guys who have come to Australia and spent a significant amount of time in some of the big cities in particular like Sydney and Melbourne will know that we are mental we are crazy about our coffee we take that stuff seriously there are probably hundreds of cafes in the CBDs of Sydney and Melbourne alone the quality of the beans that are used the variety of different coffees that you can get and the artisanry that is used the the skill with which people are trained up to make the coffee is pretty much as good as it ever gets anywhere in the world, at least I'm told, right? I used to work in a cafe and that was one of the things they prided themselves most on, the quality of their coffee. So it may be a shock when you come to Australia that the coffee is very, very good. Not everywhere, but in a lot of places. Probably not very good if you go to Starbucks because that's American style and Americans, they have their own way of doing coffee. Number five barbecues at camping grounds and at the beach so again i grew up in australia i used to go camping all the time several times a year with my parents we would go to places in the bush you know forests national parks places like wilson's prom wilson's promontory in victoria every time you go to those places there tend to be places where you can barbecue food you can cook food okay. quite often they have gas you might have to put some money in there to be able to use the gas maybe you have to bring your own fuel for the barbecue you know there might be some places campsites where you have to make the fire yourself but pretty much every campsite you go to will have some kind of barbecue for you to cook food and it's the same for a lot of beaches that have tourist spots where people come in large numbers and they want to have food so there's barbecues everywhere this was something that Kel found really strange and it wasn't the cultural norm in Brazil for you to go to camping grounds or to beaches and find places to just barbecue your own food if you wanted to do that you'd have to bring your own BYO Barbie in Australia you don't have to Wow, it's really, 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 really interesting though. Um, the fact that you know your second hand cars are kind of cheap in Australia compared to Brazil is comparing it to Brazil because his wife is is a Brazilian, you understand? And there are some things that she found so weird when she, when she later married her husband and moved down to Australia. So unfortunately, uh, his wife is not available to you know shoot this video with him, but it's giving us those points based on his wife point of view as she actually saw Australia after leaving Brazil to come and stay in Australia. And the toilet paper actually is not really strange that um, in some other countries you can throw in your toilet paper inside the um, toilet and you flush easily. But he said that in Brazil they don't do that because you find it difficult to flush if you throw it inside the toilet. So either way you can do it over here where I stay in Africa like either you put it inside the bin or the toilet it's all good. It's a flush. So um, that was kind of strange to add though. Most of these things are not really shocking to me because in some countries, they are also like that. Some cars to are cheap. Second hand cars to are cheap in some countries. And you know, um, the coffee aspect, I can't really say about coffee because uh, I'm not a fan of coffee though. And if African, we don't take coffee. Like we take more of tea, <laughs> like tea, tea. But coffee, you know, is really rare. So let's keep watching guys. Number six, and this is one that Brazilians always tell me whenever I meet them, our secondhand culture in Australia is different from Brazil, probably elsewhere in the world as well. So what happens if I have a couch in my house that I don't want anymore? I don't just throw it out. I don't just give it away to friends, although, you know, you could do that if you wanted. Quite often what will be done is it'll be taken outside, put on the nature strip with some cardboard that says free. And so people know that if they see junk or chairs, TVs, furniture, all that sort of stuff, if they see that in the nature strip out the front of someone's house, they know that it's free. Someone can take that, mm -hmm. uh, that it's free to a good home, that anyone can come and pick that up and take it home. And we do that all the time. A lot of the stuff that we have in our house is either bought secondhand online through places like Gumtree or Facebook, 
or we've seen it on the side of the road and thought, we don't want to waste that, we want to use it, so let's just bring it home and, and use it. So that's something you'll notice in Australia quite a lot. When you drive around the streets, there'll be furniture on nature strips, there'll be secondhand stuff, and it's free to be picked up. Number seven, drinking water from the tap. This was another one that shocked me quite a lot because it's something I take for granted that the water in our water system that gets brought to our houses is drinkable. You can drink the water out of the shower, when you're having a bath, you can drink any of the water that comes out of the pipes in your house, generally, right? Should be all good. That is not the case elsewhere in the world. Quite often when I was traveling in Southeast Asia, that would definitely not be something that foreigners like me should do because we would quite often end up with uh, sickness, end up on the toilet riding the porcelain throne for quite a few days with a uh, digestive illness. In Australia, it tends to be fine. We put chlorine in the water to kill everything. There's fluoride in there too for your teeth. So that was something that really shocked me. Elsewhere in the world, you may not be able to drink out of the taps. I know that in Brazil, they quite often have purifiers for their water right next to their sinks in their kitchens. In Australia, you won't see those things. There may be purifiers on the taps themselves, or people may have some kind of equipment in the fridge, you know, a jug that purifies the water. But generally, anywhere in Australia that has flowing water that comes out of taps, it's fine to drink, unless it says otherwise. Number eight, and I'm totally guilty of this, leaving things unlocked. So we live in Ocean Grove, which is a seaside town down the coast, about an hour and a half away from Melbourne. And quite often, I leave the doors unlocked in the house. I leave my car unlocked. It tends to be a very safe place. There's very little robbery. There's, there's very little criminality taking wow. place in Ocean Grove. Most places in Australia <laughs> tend to be pretty safe and you won't see things like massive locks on doors, grills protecting windows and doors, mm. and people leaving their cars and their houses unlocked. Don't get me wrong. I definitely lock it from time to time when I'm going away or I'm going out for a long period of time and no one's at home. But this was something that my wife Kel from Brazil found very strange that you would just leave doors open or you know you would go to bed and have the gauze doors shut at night which could just be opened to let air in she would find that very strange that they would not be locked and also that you wouldn't lock your car number nine walking the streets at night so when i met my wife i was living in melbourne in north melbourne and quite often i would be busy during the day studying and then I would go to the gym, I would go and do jujitsu, I would come home, and at maybe 10 or 11 o'clock at night, I would go for a run or I'd go for a walk, listen to a podcast, and just walk around the streets. I would walk through some of the parks like Royal Park or Princess Park, and I'd be like, you know, it's not a problem. That was a massive no-no for Kel. That was something that she would never, ever, ever do because mm. in Brazil, it's Nothing. relatively unsafe to walk around by yourself at, at night, night, especially oh, in places like parks where there's no light. <laughs> so that was something that kind of shocked me as well. I was like, well, you know, it's Australia. Well, it's pretty safe here. You can sort of walk around anywhere and it's, you know, you, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Obviously we have our own fair share of crime and sometimes bad things do happen to people, but usually you can walk around at night, especially in somewhere like a CBD, you know, a, um, a city like Melbourne or Sydney, and you're perfectly safe. So that was something that she found very strange. That was a big culture shock for her when she found out that I would sometimes go for a walk around midnight throughout Melbourne, throughout the parks, with music in my ears or listening to a podcast, you know, for an hour or so, and it was no big deal. But yeah, there you go. Number 10, guys, the very last one for this episode in Australia is that there is very little rubbish or littering in Australia compared to a lot of other countries. Culturally, this is a big no-no. So I cringe every time I see someone smoking who throws their cigarette butt on the ground because usually there's a bin within walking distance that they could just put the cigarette out and throw it in the bin. The same with throwing newspapers or you know any kind of rubbish, bottles, whatever it is, on the ground. That tends to be a very big social no-no. You don't do that, you put it in the trash. We have bins all over the country, in parks, on streets, where you can throw your rubbish out. So in Australia, littering, it, it occurs, people definitely litter, but it is a social no-no. You will quite often be yelled at or people will say something if you do that in front of people, okay? So that's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Oh, interesting, guys. Interesting. Like, working um, in the night, it might be strange to his wife because in our country, it's not done that way. It's just like in my country, Nigeria, you can't work at night. Like, who dare you? Like, when you reach a particular time of the night, you stay indoors. Like, anything can happen. It's not safe. So, I really understood. And I learned a lot about, like, I learned a lot from everything like it's really nice it's really nice watching and i hope you learned one or two things about australia where things about life in australia so guys that's all i have for in this particular video don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one bye